In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. May dear people of God, on this fifth Sunday of Lent, we ask the Lord, primarily, to give us that sense of belongingness, that we belong to Him, in the very sense that, Ezekiel was able to preach unto the dead bones because God owned those bones and God gave them life. In this Mass, we pray that this coronavirus will be removed from us because God is calling the shots. God is in charge. And in this Mass, we ask the Lord to grant us good health to put a stop to this virus, to lead the researchers into the discovery of the vaccine, and to grant protection to those who are in the front lines. And in today's Mass, we pray as well for the repose of the following. Roberto Cadoneo Jr., Amparo Sembrano, Bobo Ternando, and Manolito Mondaya. We pray for the sick. I pray for the parish, St. Peter's. I pray for the couples for Christ. I pray for my own family. I pray for my batchmates. We finished elementary in the year 70. I pray for those who have nobody to pray for them. Brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins and ask the Lord's forgiveness. I confess. Together, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I am failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. By your help, we beseech you, Lord our God. May we walk eagerly in the same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord our God, O my people, I will open your graves and have you rise from them and bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves and have you rise from them, O my people, I will put my spirit in you that you may live. I will settle you upon your land. Thus you shall know that I am the Lord. I have promised, and I will do it, says the Lord. Thank be to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Response to our song. Your response will be, With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. Out of the depths I cry to you, Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive. To my voice in supplication. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. If you, Lord, mark iniquities, Lord, who can stand? But with you is forgiveness, that you may be revered. With the Lord there is mercy and 
fullness of redemption. I trust in the Lord. My soul trusts in His word. More than sentinels wait for the dawn. Let Israel wait for the Lord. With, with the Lord, Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. redemption. For with the Lord is kindness and with Him is plenteous redemption. And He will redeem Israel from all their iniquities. With the Lord, the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. redemption. Second reading. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are in the flesh cannot please God, but you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the Spirit, if only the Spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to Him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is alive because of righteousness. If the Spirit of the One who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the One who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also, through His Spirit dwelling in you. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Verse before the Gospel. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will never die. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Glory Lord. To you, Lord. There was a, a man ill, Lazarus from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who had anointed the Lord with perfumed oil and dried his feet with her hair. It was her brother Lazarus who was ill. So the sister sent word to Jesus saying, Master, the one you love is ill. When Jesus heard this, he said, This illness is not to end in death, but is for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha, and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was ill, he remained for two days in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, let us go back to Judea. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews there were just trying to stone you, and you want to go back there? Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours in a day? If one walks during the day, he does not stumble, because he sees the, the light of this world. But if one walks at night, he stumbles, because the light is not in him. He said this, and then told them, Our friend Lazarus is asleep, but I am going to awaken him. So the disciples said to him, Master, if he is asleep, he will be saved. But Jesus was talking about his death. While they thought that he meant ordinary sleep. So then Jesus said to them clearly, Lazarus has died. And I am glad for you that I was not there, that you may believe. Let us go to him. So Thomas, called Didymus, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go to die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, only about two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, but Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise. Martha said to him, I know he will rise. In the resurrection of the last day, Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I have come to believe that you are the Christ, 
the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. When she had said this, she went and told her sister Mary secretly, saying, The teacher is here. He is asking for you. As soon as she heard this, she rose quickly and went to him. For Jesus had not yet arrived into the village, but was still where Martha had met him. So when the Jews who were with her in the house, comforting her, so Mary was getting up quickly and went out, they followed her, presuming that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come to her weeping, she became perturbed and deeply troubled and said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Sir, come and see. And Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind man have done something so that this man would not have died? Jesus, perturbed again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay across it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him, Lord, by now there will be a stench. He had been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I yet tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always hear me. But because of the crowd, I have said this, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, tied hand and foot with burial bonds, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. So Jesus said to them, Untie him and let him go. Many of the Jews who had come to Mary and seen what he had done began to believe in him. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Christ to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I wish to start our reflection for this fifth Sunday of Lent with the beautiful letter from Paul to the Romans when he said, Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. That means if we reverse that, those who are in God, that means those who are not attuned to the flesh. Those who are not focused into their flesh, meaning the side of human existence that gives emphasis to the body, but rather of the spirit, that they are the ones who can please God. So let's make two distinctions here. Flesh, meaning what we do materially, what we do aesthetically with the body, and not focused on the spirit, then that is what Paul was saying. Those who are into the flesh can't please God. But those who are using their body to please God, those who are focused into the instrumentality of the body, being the instrument in order to praise God, then that is a dwelling place for God. That is God's abode in man. The Greeks back then used the word sarx to mean, to mean flesh. They used the word soma to mean body. So when Paul talks about the flesh, he was talking about the carnal pleasures. When he talked about the body, he meant the body created by God for his own divine purposes. So here we go, talking about what we do with the body. The body is not sinful. It is how we use the body away from the designs of God that makes this body sinful. I'd like to speak in the first person singular. If I use my body 
other than the purposes that God made me, then this body is sinful. I am sinful. I can't please God. But if I use my body according to the purposes that God has made me, living as if God resides in me, then this body becomes a temple of the Spirit, and the Spirit makes His abode in me, then I am pleasing to God, and God will give me life. Let's go to the first reading. As I said in the beginning, I was talking about this coronavirus. Here is Ezekiel who was asked by the Lord, Go around these bones. Now those bones were dry. It means when these people were still alive, they were grouped together. Perhaps these were soldiers slain. And Ezekiel, who was a priest and a prophet, had to be careful walking around the bones. Being a priest, he had to be careful about his cleanliness. Otherwise, he will be defiled. These are dead men's bones. And then the Lord said, prophesy with due diligence to the command of Yahweh the Lord. He was obedient. He talked to the bones because the words he would speak would be the words of the Lord Yahweh. Interestingly, the words of the Lord had an effect on the bones. The bones grouped together. Slowly, they assembled into a skeleton. Flesh and skin covered the, those bones. They became corpses. That's a corpse. It's not a living body. Again, the Lord Yahweh told Ezekiel, Preach unto the bones. Prophesy unto the bones. That means the words that came from the mouth of Ezekiel were the words of Yahweh. Because no prophet would preach according to his own wisdom, according to his own caprice and whims. He would only act and say in the name of the Lord Yahweh. And these dead bodies received life again. I want you to mark this, that even before Ezekiel finished his preaching, these dead bodies regained life. Now, using that as our springboard to appreciate today's first reading, we are starting on verse 12. We will end on verse 14 of chapter 37 of the book of Ezekiel. What I have just told you was the earlier verse. Now we are on the 12th verse. And here is Yahweh the Lord saying, I will make you rise from your graves and you will know that I am the Lord. I will give you life and you will live in the land where I have prepared you to live. Let's go back to the history of the Israelites. When Solomon died, the kingdom became divided. Ten tribes became the northern kingdom. It became the kingdom of Israel. Two tribes became the kingdom of Judah. I repeat, ten tribes, northern kingdom, Israel. Capital was Samaria. Two tribes in the south. Southern kingdom was Judah. The capital was Jerusalem. And here are the Israelites. When they were exiled to Assyria, those who belonged to the northern kingdom just stopped existing. They ceased to exist. I want you to mark this. The northern kingdom just got annihilated. Second, Exile to Babylon, no longer to Assyria. Who exiled them? Nebuchadnezzar. And there in Babylon, they were reduced to slavery. It is at this time 
in the exile to Babylon that Ezekiel was part of that group that who were exiled. It was there in Babylon that he prophesied that he exercised his priestly ministry and his prophetic ministry. It was then that he spoke those words. Now why am I raising that issue? It is because I want you to know that with these two kingdoms, now the northern kingdom that was just decimated, and the southern kingdom that was still alive but under the hands of the Babylonians under King Nebuchadnezzar, it was then that the hope for both kingdoms, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom, would be ignited again. That would be a living hope. Because Yahweh the Lord was saying, all these bones, meaning bones of the northern kingdom and the bones of the southern kingdom will be one again. I'd like to raise this issue so that we will be focused on what we are going through right now. This coronavirus. The Lord who will that both kingdoms will be restored. In His divine designs up to our times, we have received blessings from the Lord. Not just being raised back to life, but giving good health. Being given what we should have in order to put food on the table, to educate our kids, to establish God's kingdom on earth. We need that healing presence of God. As He did that to Israelites in the northern kingdom, as He did that to Israelites in the southern kingdom, He will do that again. God writes straight and crooked lines. If he allows a Good Friday, he will allow an Easter Sunday. If he allows us to suffer this coronavirus, this COVID-19, he will surely do something to get rid of that. He will inspire the researchers, those who are doing their best to provide vaccine for this virus. So join me in this endeavor. We are still in the first reading. I want you to get a good grasp in that. God is in charge. God calls the shots, as he did in the times of Ezekiel. Let's go now to the gospel. Jesus was in the other place called Bethany of Perea, across the Jordan. Martha and Mary sent a messenger to him, telling, Lord, your friend whom you love so much is ill. And Jesus says, this illness will not come to an end. It will not end in death. He stayed there two days more. Now let's talk about geography. If Bethany, where Lazarus and Mary and Martha were from, sent a messenger to Bethany across the Jordan, it would take a day for that messenger to reach. If Jesus stayed two days more, that means the one day travel of the messenger, add that to the two days when the Lord Jesus stayed there, and then the travel of Jesus to Bethany near Judea, it will be the fourth day, certainly Lazarus died. Because when he arrived near the place, Martha would leave her house and meet the Lord outside the village and he would say Lord if you were here my brother would not have died and then they had that conversation which ended up Jesus saying I am the resurrection I am the life whoever believes in me will not die whoever believes in me and is alive even if he dies he will live reassuring words that Jesus gave to Martha and then Martha left, went back to her house, and told Mary, her sister, the Lord is here. Mar Mary went out of the house, went to Jesus. Some of those who were sympathizing with them, those who were mourning with them, went with Mary thinking she was going to the tomb, to cry in the tomb. But she went to Jesus. And again, 
Like Martha said, Lord, if you were here, my brother would not have died. And here is Jesus perturbed, touched by the sorrow that Mary was going through. And then he saw that the people were also crying. Remember that he said earlier when his disciples knew that Lazarus was sick and he said, this illness will not end in death. And then he says, I am glad, okay, I am glad that this has now ended in death. He told them plainly, when he said, Lazarus is asleep. I told you a while ago that I will wake him up. And you told me if he is just sleeping, then he will get well. But no, I'm telling you now that he is dead. I'll go now. But I am glad that I am glad that this happened. Now, human as we are, we could ask, why was the Lord glad? Is he glad in the death of someone? No. Because he added something. By this death, God will be glorified. And the Son of Man, he, Jesus, will be glorified. Let's talk about how he reacted now when he saw Mary crying. He saw the others crying. He also cried. That means he wasn't glad. He wasn't glad. But he said that, that earlier, it was because by this, God will be glorified because he would raise Lazarus back to life. So here he's saying, bring me to him. And the tomb was blocked by a big stone. And he says, remove the stone. Martha says, Lord, it's the fourth day. There will be stench. There will be foul odor. And he says, did I not tell you that I am the resurrection? Now, remember, this is the fourth day. Remember that Jews thought, those who were at school in the scriptures, Jews thought that after three days, the person is certainly dead. That's why Mary said, it's fourth day, Lord. There will be stench. So here we are contemplating on a real death. And here is Jesus commanding Lazarus, Lazarus come out. The dead man came out, still bound by the bands for burial. And he said, untie him from the bands. So those bandages were removed. Here is God's direct intervention in life. And in death he directly intervened so that Lazarus being dead now known to everybody people were afraid he would be stinking but he is now alive let me go back to what we are going through now this coronavirus we are all afraid you my friends you my family you my former parishioners in Valley Stream you who will be watching this after this video. We all go through this. It's not easy. But I assure you that with God's help, if he is interested, if he was interested in the life of the Israelites, those who belong to the northern kingdom and those of the southern kingdom, if he gave life to both people, they were one before during David's time, during Solomon's time, and then they were divided. If he cared for them, he will care for us. And so, talk about death, he will care for us, as he did for Lazarus. Talk about sickness, he will care for us. So join me in praying to God that he will remove this coronavirus. We have the readings of today. Paul's letter to the Romans, he talked about life, if we are not attached to the flesh, life, if we are using the body to praise God, to do His will, life coming from God, given to the dead bones, life given to Lazarus from Jesus. God calls the shots. God is in charge. He will be dealing with us directly. We will cling to Him. Amen.
as our response to God's Word. We profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and made, consubstantial with the Father. Through Him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake He was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Brothers and sisters, trusting in the life-giving power of Christ, we fill our prayers, we lift up our prayers, and our petitions to our Father in heaven. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayers. That all leaders and members of our church may be graced with the guidance and wisdom of the Holy Spirit. Let Lord. us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That world leaders may be helped by God in putting aside selfish agenda, seek justice and equality for people under their care. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That those who are in mourning may be consoled by God in their grief and made confident in the hope of the resurrection for their loved ones, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That all members of our faith community may receive the mercy of God for themselves and with His help offer it to others. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That our beloved dead and all those who have died may know the joy and fullness of life in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Let us pray for the repose of Roberto Canonea Jr., Amparo Sembrano, Bobo Ternando, and Manolito Mondaya, and those who have died recently because of the coronavirus. Either they were the victims or they were the doctors and the nurses who cared for these victims, who became victims themselves later on. We pray to the Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful Father, with humble confidence, we ask you, hear our prayers. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us our bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this 
wine to offer, fruits of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that this our sacrifice may become acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept us at the face of your hands. For the grace and the glory of his name, for our for good you. and the good of all his church. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up. To the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's, it is right and just. It is truly totally right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ. For us true man, he wept for Lazarus, his friend. As Eternal God, he raised him from the tomb. Just as taking pity on the human race. He leads us by sacred mysteries to a new life. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we are playing. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. highest. Blessed, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. highest. You are indeed holy, o Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore this gift we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, gave you thanks, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Again, he gave you thanks, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. It will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, John Barris our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. At this point, we pray for our beloved dead. I wish to pray for Roberto Cananeo Jr., for Amparo Sembrano, for Bobo Hernando, for Manolito Mundaya. We pray for those who have recently died. Patience, 
and those who care for them. And later on, they come to be pain patients. We pray for the least remembered son in purgatory. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. I pray for the entire parish of St. Peter's. I pray for my former parish, Blessed Sacrament in Valley Stream, for my friends there, for the missionaries for Christ, for the couples for Christ, for my family in the Philippines, in Canada, in Australia, in New Jersey. I pray for those I promised to pray for. For my batchmates in the grade school I finished at, Valley Central School. I pray for Roman and his family. I pray for Trini, for Noel, for Trinol and Connie. I pray for those who were with me in the Holy Land last January. I pray for those who have nobody to pray for them. Then with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom and the power and the glory of us now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, for will and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you. You are in your homes, watching this live stream. Peace be with you. May God grant you a double portion of his spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have, have mercy, mercy on us. us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant, grant us peace. peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am a poor that you should enter into my room, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
are watching me in this live stream, you may have noticed that I can't give communion. The directives are such that the celebrant can only receive communion for himself. He can't give. So, we will pray the act of spiritual communion. For the sake of those who are in your homes, I like to do this slowly so that we would feel in our hearts the impact of the words in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot receive you at this moment sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there. I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that you may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. I wish to thank Australia for having streamlined this Mass, and I wish to thank you for watching this Mass, and those of you who will watch this later on. My batchmates in the year 70 in Alicia Central School, friends here in New Jersey, cousins, nephews and nieces in Australia, Canada, again New Jersey, in the Philippines, and those of you who have been with me in my past assignments, especially the most recent one, in Valley Stream and in Elmont. That's the sacrament of Valley Stream and St. Boniface of Elmo. And you, my dear parishioners, watching this now, I pray that God will give you a double portion of His Spirit. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, our Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. The Mass has ended. Father Nestor has left the church, and we want to thank each and every one of you that has been present during this Mass. May the Lord be with you and help you through these difficult times. Until the next time, He will bless you and keep you safe and bless your family. See you then.